everybody and welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial with the channel of the world of building design. In the continuation of the psychrometric chart uh, tutorials, um, I would like to go back to one of the previous tutorial and in this tutorial we would like to uh, make a calculation of the sensible and latent heat load uh, in two different methods. So if you remember from previous tutorial, we had a condition with a makeup area unit of 20,000 CFM and um, the outdoor design condition was 95 degree Fahrenheit with the relative humidity of 80%. And uh, we want to calculate the latent and sensible heat removal uh, required to achieve the discharge air condition of 60 degree drywall at uh, 50% relative humidity. So we, we, we have two different points. As you remember, we spotted the first point, which is the outdoor condition at uh, 95 degree Fahrenheit and at our relative humidity of 80%, as you can see is on this uh, curve. We selected the, you know, the intersection location and we spotted the other uh, parameters off of the first uh, point. The second point was the desired uh, condition, 60 degree Fahrenheit at 50% relative humidity, which was uh, this point at 60 and 50% uh, relative humidity. Now, in order to get into that calculation, uh, there are two methods we can do this. Uh, you can do either through um, uh, getting the enthalpy of uh, the condition at the starting and the second point. Um, the second option is to separately calculate the sensible load based on the sensible equation that we have practiced in the past and also the latent load equation separately and then the sum of the, uh, the sensible and latent load gives you the total load. Obviously when we do this calculation there might be a little bit of uh, difference between the two numbers but uh, you know the calculation would be fairly negligible for for the difference that we come up with. So in the first point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to determine what's the enthalpy. So what I have to do, I have to draw a line parallel to the enthalpy lines that you can see on where my cursor is. These are all enthalpy or the energy content of the air in every pound of air. I've already located this and I'm going to just extend these lines. So these lines are going to continue and reach to the first point, as you can see here. So you have to basically drag uh, your line uh, alongside parallel to the enthalpy line, as you can see. And you do that the second location or the second point that we want to achieve. So I'm going to just continue that until I reach to my point here on the second condition. So that's going to be the second condition. So basically the enthalpy at the second point would be 20 BTU per pound of air versus almost 55 BTU per pound of air. So I'm going to go to the next page where we have the equation here. So in the first method, which is enthalpy method, as you can see, I have 55 BTU per pound and on the number 3 is 20.2 BTU per pound. The enthalpy in the number 2 is basically is where we calculate the latent heat removal or latent load removal. I'm going to go back and show you what that means is, so if you look at the enthalpy line, as you cool down the air, outside air, you get rid of the moisture content represented by this vertical line here. You get the humidity ratio decreasing from the from this dash line going down all the way to get to the point two. Basically, the difference between the enthalpy at point one and this point number two would be exclusively related to your latent heat removal. The difference between the point one and point three of the uh, enthalpy would be representative of the total uh, heat removal from the uh, air stream because it's a combination of the sensible load, which is this number two and number three would be your sensible uh, enthalpy and the difference between number one and number three would be the total heat removal or the uh, enthalpy. So I hope this is uh, helpful uh, to this point. 
so that's why we also show the point number two, which is representative of the um, enthalpy at the point where we have removed all of this moisture from the air stream from the point A. So going back to number two, uh, to uh, this page here. So then, as you remember, you can easily calculate your total heat removal by just multiplying simply your mass rate of your air at the point one multiplied by difference of the enthalpy between point one and three which is giving you the total uh, enthalpy difference if you look at the uh, units you know that the mass rate has a unit of pound of dry air per hour uh, multiplied by BTU per pound of dry air so you cancel out the pound of dry air and basically you get the BTU per hour, so your total air. Um, now, for the mass rate of air, if we had uh, 20,000 CFM of air, you just simply multiply by 60 to get uh, transformed it into the uh, mass rate per hour, divided by your um, a specific volume that we read previously from the psychrometric chart. So to, to know how to get this number, Again, if you go back and look at our psychrometric chart, if you look at this green line, this green line is basically drawn parallel to the specific volume. If you look at these lines, these lines are uh, specific volume of air. And as you can see in this point, we decided this number or we estimated this number to be 14.6. So going back to the second page here. By this, you can get the mass rate of your dry air for 20,000 CFM and then when you multiply here, you have the difference between the enthalpy at point 1, which is outdoor condition minus enthalpy uh, of air at the point 2, which is the desired condition, and the difference is multiplied and you get the total heat that you need to remove to achieve uh, the point 2 for the air stream after the cooling coil. Obviously there is something about this example that I would like to you to comment about the possibility of this scenario. If you can provide your comments, uh, we can discuss that further uh, about the possibility of such scenario, whether or not uh, this cooling coil can in fact provide such cooling or it, it, it has such capacity. Is it possible? Is it not possible? What do you think about it? Please write in the comment section. I would like to understand your point of view. In the next step, I just want to calculate the latent heat removal. So I basically repeat the same process. Instead of getting the difference between point 1 and 3, now we get the, the difference of the enthalpy between point 1 and 2. And uh, now I repeat the same process with the mass rate of air. And now I get the total heat that needs to be removed from the air stream to remove the latent heat or the portion of the latent heat. Um, the, same, the same process is applied uh, for the sensible load where we, um, you know, we get the difference between point 0.2 and 3 as we showed in the psychrometric chart and multiply by the mass rate and then what, what we get is the sensible. And so now the total heat, you get it by summing up your latent and, and sensible from these two equation. The second method, I'm going based on the latent heat of vaporization of uh, water. You can, you can find the um, latent heat of vaporization of water from, uh, from the water uh, property tables. For this specific purpose, I have used 1060 uh, BTU per pound of water. Uh, so this is basically the, the energy required to vaporize and condense is the same for uh, for the water content in the airstream. So I use that as the reference here. And then for the pound of water per pound of dry air, as you remember, it was um, the difference of the humidity ratio between point 1 and point 2. So I'm going to go back here to show you what we say. So if this is our point 1, we had our humidity ratio as uh, like something around 2 of 5 um, grain of water per pound of dry air. And then on the second point, which is this point, we have removed you know, considerable humidity from airstream. Um, 
So this number here between 30 to 40, we'll look at it at the next page, is a representative of humidity ratio at 0.2. So if I go to the point uh, to, to this page, so on the point 2, we got the number 37 for the point 2. So the difference becomes 168 grain of water per pound of dry air we have to remove to, to be able to get into the second point for the relative humidity and temperature. And now for the conversion factor to convert the grain of water to pound of water per pound of dry air, uh, I divide that by 7,000 and I get this 0 0.024 as the pound of water per pound of dry air we have to remove this much water this mass of water from the air stream now that number comes in here and if you simplify this uh, units for this three um, elements of this equation uh, you get into the BTU per hour uh, which is specifically for calculation of the latent heat removal from air stream for the sensible heat removal, I'm simply using the same equation that we used to use before. The air factor of 1.08 multiplied by CFM cubic feet per minute of air stream passing through the coil multiplied by temperature difference, which in our case is a temperature difference between 95 to uh, 60 degree. So this is there. We have a 35 degree Fahrenheit temperature difference. If you look at this horizontal line, is where we have to move from this temperature sensibly to the second point, which is point 60. So for that case, I'm using this. And as you remember from the previous tutorial, we also discussed where the air factor of 1.08 comes from and how this needs to be corrected depending on the geographic location and, and the altitude and elevation of where we do this calculation for our systems or for our project. So this number has to be co corrected. In this case, I have just assumed that uh, all the calculation will happen in the uh, sea level, so I don't need to make any correction of this number. So I'm going to use simply the same um, you know, parameters that we had, 20,000 CFM of air, 35 degree Fahrenheit temperature difference, and multiplied by this air factor, I come up with this uh, sensible load. And if you compare this two load, 756,000 versus 706,000, 849.3, these are very negligible difference. It's, it's around, like, even if you look at the latent heat removal, the number you get here is uh, in the range of like 1 to 2% uh, error of the calculation here. Obviously, we put these two numbers together to come up with total heat. So this, these are the two separate methods on how you can calculate your sensible and latent load uh, by looking at the psychrometric chart. But um, I would like to you to think about this example and also look at the the, the condition at point A and point B and in the comment section I would like to you to uh, to write down whether or not this is psychrometrically possible what do you think about it and what has to be done so that you can get from point one to point B thank you very much for watching this video if you like this type of tutorial please press on the like button and also subscribe in the channel and by pressing notification button, you will see the new tutorials as soon as they are posted. Thank you very much.